Hey guys, welcome to My Counselor Online. I'm Tori and this is Asking for a Friend. In today's video, I'm going to be sitting down with licensed therapist Lacey Wallace to answer one of your questions about an emotional affair and infidelity in marriage. Keep watching. What do you do when your husband will not end the relationship completely after an emotional affair was discovered? He says the affair is over, but they're still around one another. Lacey, what would be your response to this kind of question? Um, it is, that is a really difficult question. Um, so many different um, scenarios or circumstances, situations uh, could be depicted into that question. So what I'm understanding it to be is that this woman's husband has become emotionally attached to somebody, uh, another woman, not her. And this was discovered or it was disclosed to her. And um, now I'm understanding that he's saying that the affair is over, but that they're still around one another and whether or not he's willing or not willing to break off that connection. So that's kind of what I'm hearing that the question is and how should she respond? What is a right. Right. What yeah. No, that's kind do. of what I'm hearing too. What would you say, I mean, to start it off, what's kind of the difference between a physical affair and an emotional affair? Are they one and the same? Do they have, you know, if you could just kind of elaborate on that too. Well, I think probably what it is, is the feeling of betrayal is there, whether or not a sexual act has occurred. And we can put somebody in uh, a place that our spouse needs to be without actually having to have a sexual relationship with them. And so the emotional affair um, is, is different as to where there is that connection. It's just um, without moving towards something that's sexual um, that would constitute it being a physical affair. And, but the betrayal is still very real, whether or not there's been a sexual act or not. And so obviously this wife is feeling you know, feeling the weight of that betrayal and feeling a desire to, to know why uh, her husband refuses to um, disconnect himself from the affair partner. And so, you know, looking at this, I would, I would really want to get curious. So if this was a couple that I was sitting down with, I would want to, you know, grab a hold of all the details um, and, you know, make for sure that I could, would, was understanding the situation. So is a situation that this couple is working, or this husband is working in a large corporation, and he just sees this woman every once in a while, do they work for the same company, and are they not um, in the same location? What is the communication looking like? Is this an affair with a family member to where they see one another lots of times? So an affair with an in-law, to where the connection is there? Is it a church connection? Is it somebody that they are in a friend group with? So how close is this connection? Are they just seeing one another or are they still communicating via text or um, having, you know, spending time together? I would want to get really curious. Some infidelity recoveries that come to me are pretty cut and dry and some are really complex as far as who the person was that the affair occurred with. And so um, that would be something that I would, you know, want to address and see, you know, I've had situations um, in the past to where houses have been sold, people have relocated, jobs have been, you know, quit and, uh, you know, new, new employment, um, you know, gained because of the affair partner being in that close proximity, being at work or having been to the home or being in a small town, that that is just something that the couple does in order to heal and recover from the infidelity, which, you know, it's a, it's a really big ask of the betraying spouse for his wife to be okay with him continuing in contact with the affair partner. It's a really big ask. Um, and one that I would want to be curious about. So is this the connection staying because he's afraid of quitting his job or um, because it's a family member and that's really awkward? Or is this connection not being cut off because he's grieving a loss um, that his, 
that he's choosing his marriage, but still grieving the loss of this person that he was with. Um, and so it would, you know, it would just be really need to be assessed on, as, a, as to why he's choosing not to, you know, honor his wife in that um, time and disconnect. Because honestly, um, the husband doesn't have really any kind of, um, there's no, his, his integrity with this person has already been compromised. And so there's, there's no, there's no reason for his wife to trust him at this point with that person because that line has been crossed. And so it's really, really difficult um, for her to be okay with continued contact, even if he says the affair. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it seems like even in the question, it's implied that they've had a conversation about it. It's implied that like he's unwilling to do, break off that connection if, if she's asked him to be willing to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, this is, this is one of those situations. Most, most all infidelity cases, you know, couples need help. They need help navigating through these things. They need somebody that can come alongside them and really help them, um, through this healing process, both, you know, on both sides, both as the betrayed spouse and as the betraying spouse. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, all of our therapists here are uh, e equipped, you know, capable of coming alongside and doing that. Um, we've had great success. I've walked through, you know, um, infidelity recovery with couples that, you know, are stronger on the, on the other end of it because they've worked really hard um, to make the changes necessary in their marriage to make it work. So, Infidelity doesn't have to be a death sentence to a marriage, but it requires so much dedication and intentionality to move forward. It's not easy. And just because they're choosing reconciliation doesn't mean the choices and the decisions that are made um, will be easy. They will be hard, you know, whether or not that is, you know, quitting your job or, you know, selling a vehicle or selling your house, relocating, you know, these are difficult decisions, but at the end might be you know, what's best for the marriage to survive. Thank you so much for watching this video. We love getting to answer your questions and engage with you. If you have some thoughts, go ahead and comment them below. And if you have a question for one of our licensed therapists, you can ask that at mycounselor.online slash ask. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.